<laughs> Studio 701, where we celebrate all things about living in the 701, and we are also celebrating today National Dog Day. That's right. That's why Chica's are here hanging out with us today. Chica is our general manager's adorable pup. Yeah. Uh, we can tell she's a Chihuahua mix. Of Chihuahua some sort. and Pampion yeah. ears, those ears. Pampion, yeah, I looks think. Looks like it. We'll yeah. find out. We'll clarify on that. Yeah. And we will be talking much more about National Dog Day later in the show. But as you can see, you might see Chica leave us, join us, sit with us for a well, while. Well, see, right now she seems to be pretty happy. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how long this is going to last. <laughs> I thought you were only a cat man. Here, I had you no know, idea. You know, I'm actually a dog man turned cat man. Yeah. And now I'm just... Coming back around. A dog cat man. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with loving both. There's nothing wrong. Um, but I do want to ask you, you went on quite an adventure, didn't you? Yeah. Tuesday after the show, I was feeling like the need to stretch my legs a little bit, so I headed out to old Theodore Roosevelt National Park and did some hiking. Um, I love just tossing the tent in the back of the car and being able to go out and get some, get some nature. So I, I found a really awesome uh, six-mile loop trail there off of the Cottonwood Campground. And, uh, you know, it has some great views there. There's a little water feature. There's actually uh, a wild horse in the background of this oh, one. He's way too small wow. to be able to see in this photo. But I called the horse Kenny for some reason. Kenny? I, yeah, I thought it was just a fitting name for Kenny the horse out there. And he even ran into some, uh, some snakes out there, too. No. Yeah, so on the top, I believe, is a bull snake, and then the bottom snake is a yellow-bellied racer. Okay, you just stumbled across these while you were out there. Yeah, yeah, I was on the walk, and I uh, saw some snakes, oh. and, you and know. you just handled it fine? Well, yeah, I mean, I didn't go up and, like, shake their hand or, <laughs> or anything like that, but, uh, you know, snakes are doing what snakes do. I'm Michael Cartwright. I do what I do, and... Uh, <laughs> We can coexist. We can coexist. I would have screamed, though. I mean, if, if all of a sudden I saw that and I was out hiking or something. I don't know. You no. seem like you handled it just fine. Yeah, me and wildlife, you know, my father uh, is a retired forest ranger. I'm very accustomed to being outdoors and to the surprises that happen outdoors. Wildlife doesn't surprise me outdoors. It's when, like, you're hiking and all of a sudden a person pops out of nowhere. Oh, <laughs> that, yeah. that's, that's when it's kind of spooky. Well, you know? that's cool about you. I like that. Yeah. Well, if snakes don't bother you, how about bats? No, bats, uh, bats are cool. Okay. I, you know, just so you know, as a kid uh, living in Virginia, the bats would come out around dusk and we'd play this little game where you could throw little pebbles up in the sky because bats use, they think it's a bug, and you see the bats dipping and diving after oh, these pebbles. Oh, wow. Ooh, sorry, I can't help it. Okay, well, we are talking about bats later in the show, All right. so you might learn a little bit more about them from what you, what you were playing, the pebble bat game. Yeah, you know, uh, kids' games. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we talk about what they actually have in common with bees, butterflies, and lemurs. Adorable this sounds lemurs. like a joke. Yeah. I know. You wouldn't think lemurs in that group. Okay. But we are going to learn much more about all of them later in the show. Also, we want to talk about the fact that school is back in session. It's a big, t you know, everybody has been coming in saying, oh, I dropped my kids off for the first time yeah. today. And it's such a big day um, and, you know, emotional, I think, for a lot of people. I'm sure, especially, well, the kids probably feeling anxiety, excitement, and the parents. I mean, every time they drop their kids off for another first day of school, it means another year has gone by, it means yeah. more milestones. I know. I can't believe how quickly time flies. Yeah. Uh, nothing demonstrates that like when you have a kid. Um, but, you know, we're talking about how you get to school, yeah. whether you walk to school, take a bus, um, get dropped off by your parents. Do you remember how you used to get to school in the morning? Yeah, I was mainly a good old-fashioned yellow school bus kid um, until I joined band in high school and we had a thing called Zero Hour, okay. which I don't know if anyone's familiar with Zero Hour. So you have period one, right? Well, zero hour is an hour before school starts. And so for marching band and jazz band, we'd have to be there at, I think, 6.30 a.m.? Wow. Something That's like dedication, that. That's dedication, Michael. That's why you're as good as you are today. Hey, well, you know, I One guess. One of the reasons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. so how would you get to zero hour? So then my parents would have to mm -hmm. drop me off. So usually yeah. my dad would drop me off on the way to work. And then finally, one day I got a car, you know, a good 96 Ford Escort LX in Calypso yes. Green. Ooh, 
Ooh, Ooh nice. Hatchback. <laughs> that's a big day when you finally get to have your own car that's to That's right. To that's right. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think it's a good reminder, and we're talking about this later in the show, for everyone who's driving right now to be aware that there are a little, lot of little ones walking to school. Yes. Yeah. And to be aware of those safety um, concerns with kids and, and dogs like Chica too. Yeah, you have to yeah. be on the lookout. So just a good extra reminder. So we're going to talk with someone